Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Making It Big. I'm your host A.B. Ravi. This week's story is about setbacks and fight back. At every stage in his life, the hero of this week's episode, Pramod Chaudhary, who built Praj, has shown remarkable resilience and persistence while facing numerous challenges. When he was young, his father lost his job and this punctured Pramod's self-esteem. At that young age, he resolved that the only weapon to fight all odds and make a mark in his life was academic excellence. And he walked the talk. Academy, he was a topper, and that has stood him in good stead when he entered the corporate world, as also when he set up his own business. So be it humiliation by one of his employer that forced him to entrepreneurship or series of crises in business, Pramod did not take his eye off the ball. He remained intensely focused on his goal. And this has been modestly endorsed by his wife, Parimal, who has co-authored Pramod in a book title, As Is What Is. I quote her, Pramod would have done as well with or without me, because he was so obsessed, so focused, and so immersed in his dream, and so driven to act on it, that no one could stand between the two, not even me, unquote. And that obsession is evident. In three decades, Praj has emerged as India's most successful biofuels company, taking bio-based technologies from India to the world. Take a look at Praj industry story. It will show you how to get back into the game intelligently. He grew up with the smells of the overwhelming pungent odor of molasses. How little did I know that amidst these sounds and sights were the very attitudes and aptitudes that were being nurtured for my professional destiny, says Pramod Chaudhary in his book as is what is. Pramod's father, Madhukar Chaudhary, worked as an agriculture officer in the sugar belt of Satara district in Maharashtra in 1958. Pramod was then a young boy of nine. Well, the saying, your childhood influences your future, can't be more true for Pramod. Interestingly, in 1985, when 36-year-old Pramod chose the path of entrepreneurship, continuous fermentation process for agro-based distillery units got Pramod's fancy and he began scouting for customers amongst the sugar industry. In 1985, the first order came from Siddheshwar Sahakari Sakhar Karkhana in Kolapur to set up a distillery plant for their sugar factory. Praj delivered the project in just 10 months and earned the credibility amongst sugar factories in Maharashtra. But for Pramod Chaudhary, entrepreneurship was not a choice. After completing his mechanical engineering from IIT Mumbai in 1971, he worked for almost a decade at various companies. A bitter and humiliating experience at his last job led him towards entrepreneurship. What started out in 1985 as Praj Tech is today the 1,000 crore rupee Praj Industries holding a dominant position in India and the world in offering innovative solutions in design, engineering, fabrication and commissioning of ethanol process technology plants for blending in beverage, industrial grade alcohol and fuel. For Praj Industries, it was always about adapting the wheel to suit different applications. Besides, Pramod kept innovating at every stage and sourced foreign technical tie-ups where needed. By the end of 1992, Praj Industries had a 50% market share in India in the ethanol and distillery segment. Besides, Praj spread itself across the nation by reaching out to seven states outside Maharashtra. Praj was flying high and went in for an IPO in 1994 at a price of 80 rupees. From a 2 crore rupee turnover in 1989-1990, Praj had touched a turnover of 60 crore rupees in 1994-1995 with a net profit of 4 crore rupees. With money and confidence, Praj diversified into various unrelated ventures. Then the ASEAN crisis hit the company in 1998. The year 1998-1999 proved the toughest year for Praj and it was forced to downsize and booked its first ever financial loss of 12 crore rupees. Sales fell to 41 crore rupees. Pramod had to reinvent 
Pratt all over again. He now realized he must stick to his core competency, that is, his core technological expertise of setting up ethanol plants. He closed down all other businesses, but now he had no money. After much searching, an investor came in, but invested at a low price of 20 rupees per share in 1999 in a new equity placement. As luck would have it for Pramod, in January 2003, the then NDA government announced the fuel ethanol blending program. Praj was on a roll again. Seeing the huge future potential, big investors like Rakesh Junjunwala invested in Praj in January 2004. This was followed by venture capitalist Vinod Khosla in 2006 and now HDFC Mutual Fund has recently taken up stake in the company. I met Mr. Chaudhary and I found him to be an astute entrepreneur and he had very good technology for ethanol plants and I thought there would be a large demand for ethanol and seeing the valuation, the entrepreneur and the opportunity, that's why I invested. I feel Praj has now entered different industries including water. And I think with the uptick in capital expenditure in India, the prospects for that should be good. Simultaneously, overseas business began to pick up. Countries like Brazil and the US were fast implementing ethanol fuel blending programs. Fuel ethanol began gaining traction. Praj ventured into South America in the year 2000. It set up an office in Bogota, Colombia to reach out to South, Central American and Caribbean and partner customers in the region. It got contract orders for ethanol plants from across the world. Raj went on to supply for Europe's largest bioethanol plant built by Vivergo Fuels and also supplied for the first ethanol plant of UK for British sugar. Thus started Praj's overseas journey with international business today, contributing 42% to the turnover. Today, Praj has a 60% market share in ethanol and distillery plants in Southeast Asia, Africa and in South America. It has niche clients in Europe, UAE and the USA and also in Argentina, Nambia, the Philippines, Tanzania and Sierra Leone. Uh, when we learned about Praj, we thought of uh, giving them a chance and we are also eager to learn about the distillery technology so we thought of uh, uh, going into the to visit the Prats facilities in India and the various distilleries uh, they made there actually to be honest we have some bias with the Indian company being in the Philippines we rather prefer European, US, or Japan made technologies. So just a thought. So we, we just uh, have some reservations as we visited the plants in India. However, we were impressed in what we saw because uh, we were shown of their technology, the vacuum distillation technology, which uses lesser uh, energy at the same time, they have this new design on the columns, which they use trays that could easily be clean. And this means lesser downtime every time we clean, as we are suffering long downtime, about 15 to 20 days in our existing distilleries. Sales zoomed to 771 crore rupees in 2008-2009 on a standalone basis with a net profit of 130 crore rupees. On a consolidated basis, the turnover touched 954 crore rupees with a net profit at 121 crore rupees. But crisis hit Praj yet again, the Lehman crisis in 2008. Again, Praj went on a downhill spree with consolidated sales falling to 665 crore rupees in 2010-2011 and net profit falling to economic downturn in India. But Pramod never lost hope. He kept pursuing technology-intensive, value-accretive businesses which helped the company to enter new markets and new sectors. What is interesting about Praj Industries is that it has built on each block of technological expertise, whether at the fermentation or distillation stage. 
that has seen Praj get into biofuels and bionutrients and create new markets in various sectors like pharma, oil and gas, biotech and food and beverage sectors. That saw the growth of emerging businesses which includes water and wastewater treatment plants for the industrial sector, critical process equipment system for the oil and gas sector, petrochemicals, fertilizers, chemicals industry, high purity systems, high purity and hygienic systems for the pharma, biotech and food and beverage sector. Today, emerging businesses contribute as high as 31% to turnover, ethanol contributes 50% and the brewery sector 19%. Raj has well equipped manufacturing facilities in Pune where is also housed its R&D center Raj Matrix, a plant at Kandla SEZ in Gujarat and at Wada near Mumbai. All this has seen Praj touch the 1000 crore rupee turnover mark in FY 2015 with a net profit at 76 crore rupees. But its full potential has been hardly tapped with the CAPEX cycle in the domestic market not yet on an upswing. What makes Praj stand out today is its extensive proprietary technology. Praj's reference plants account for more than 7% of the world's ethanol production which is at 105 billion litres. It has 14 technology patents under its fold. Clearly, the future potential is huge. Welcome back. What is interesting about Praj industry is that it has built its whole business edifice on ethanol and distillation technology. That has enabled the company to get into biofuels and bionutrients and thus create new market in various sectors. CNBC TV 18's Veena Krishna caught up with the founder Pramod Chaudhary and MD Gajanan Nabar at the Pune office to find out how they have been able to tide over each crisis and grow the business stronger. This is what they have to say. Take a look. Mr. Chaudhary, Mr. Nabar, Sandeep, thank you for joining us. Mr. Chaudhary, how did you get into this very niche business of setting up ethanol plants? See, uh, my upbringing had been on the sugar industry. Okay. And uh, sugar co-product is what is called as alcohol. And to do something for the sugar industry, which is uh, located in rural part of India, I thought uh, deploying a better technology could be a very interesting proposition and it can be a good business proposition also, it will make a business sense. And that's how I started looking and I narrowed on my choice on alcohol technology which was practically dormant for a number of years. I okay. thought there could be a good scope to add new technologies to this range of production. Second was that always there was a belief, I heard about use of alcohol in Brazil and USA for mixing with petrol and that was another attraction though it was they say they used it in second world war and all those days also in India but there was no officially anything but with the crisis happening up and down in the oil prices and all those things I thought there could be a opportunity or possibility using alcohol in long term so these are the two major reasons how I started my trying my luck with alcohol or ethanol plant Okay, so Mr. Chaudhary, you've seen many economic disruptions over the last three decades. Okay, so uh, how would you say has Praj Industries come out of each crisis and what are the lessons that you learn from each crisis? Oh, every crisis has been very, very useful, very effective on three, four parameters. One is improving your, tightening the belt and improving your efficiencies. As an entrepreneurship, you tend to be a little more... Uh, I won't say inefficient, you, you are unwieldy and you can't, you don't give much attention to the processes and systems and uh, so maybe this, this is the time when you tighten your belt, you keep on adding manpower but this is the time when you have to take care of your, trim your manpower, so that's the one way of looking at it. The second is the importance of cash. Okay. In the first crisis I realized in 88-89 when we were just started and uh, putting up a new technology where I say, say uh, give us a venture capital. The importance of cash and cash flow was not fully understood mm -hmm. and that was, it continued till 1998-99. But after 1998-99 crisis, I realized the importance of cash flow and why cash generation is more important, not just the profit. Realize cash is, so this is the second learning. Or like that, every crisis has given us a very major learnings 
and I think our performance during the next subsequent crisis <laughs> has been much better. I wish no more crisis, but uh, I think that is, we've gone through the full cycle. Okay, Mr. Nava, today Praj Industries has a thousand crore order book. What is the kind of future business mix that you're looking at? We should look at this on two platforms. One is, uh, let's say, three to five years horizon. Okay. And uh, we certainly see that there is a lot of headroom for our newer businesses like critical process equipments and systems or Praj high purity systems. A lot of headroom in India, outside India. We've just started internationalization. So I think these businesses will certainly grow outside, uh, outside India as well. And uh, I think we see a lot of opportunities to do that. In India, again, uh, when we look at how, what's our market share for these new businesses, again, there is a lot of scope to go. But, you know, in the current context, we also have taken steps. For example, in our existing businesses, we, l we kind of introduce a business model which is built on the existing plant population. And that's actually, though it's uh, capex driven, it's not so much of capex, it's not greenfield, it's kind of brownfield expansion. So that's the way we want to grow in the growth platform there. So this is, I would say, three to five year horizon. But when I look at 10 year horizon or beyond five year horizon, okay. you clearly see that sustainability becomes a big criteria. Okay. And there's no two ways about you know, how the fossil fuel will get replaced with other kinds of energy. And biofuels is one big portion of that. And Praj having a very, very strong leadership position in India, outside India, worldwide, I think we put us in great state. We also are looking at second gen technology, which is again giving users a great arbitrage against the prices of fossil fuel against uh, you know a biomass which is locally available with the farmers and converting that into energy again is is a big advantage so i truly believe that we have a portfolio which is not only loaded for the next couple of years but you know looking at next 10 year horizon okay mr chaudhary how have you planned your diversification strategy see there is a two schools of thought one is that you build on your core competencies or other one is unrelated. Mm -hmm. I will opt for related diversification. We call it uh, synergistic diversification or diversification based on the some of the core competencies. It may not be 100%. So for example, ethanol has been our core business for first 10 years. Mm -hmm. And ethanol making has got number of stations, okay. building blocks. Now we have tried to further build on each block, mm -hmm. like fermentation took us to fermentation of grain, starch, fermentation, beer making is fermentation. And the entire bio, industrial bio or biopharma is another extension of fermentation. So starting with the fermentation expertise, we are building up on that. Mm -hmm. Distillation. Now distillation is a separation technology. Mm -hmm. So distillation, evaporation, making use of that in a different sectors chemical sector, pharma sector, it is commonly used. So we are building on that block. The third was wastewater treatment. We have been traditionally doing wastewater treatment for mm -hmm. distilleries or ethanol plant for the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. Now that expertise we are taking to make biogas. Okay. We are trying to introduce the bio CNG. We are looking at uh, making bio fertilizers. So we are using that effluent treatment or wastewater treatment as a strength to take it to other sectors, other industries. So Sandeep, how do you view their future business mix and how do you view also their internationalization efforts? Uh, to see the future, I think one has to go back and look at the history of the company and it's a great example that success doesn't happen overnight. It's been three decades and as Pramod said that they've had challenges along the way but from what I can see they've used each challenge to make the business stronger. Okay. So. The way I see it, it is a very India-centric business on a very specific sector. Mm -hmm. The first crisis were really used to diversify away from India and that's kind of worked well because if you see the business of the company at the moment, it's kind of split half between India and the world which gives them diversification from geography perspective. The crisis which came subsequently also highlighted to the company the need to move away from one single sector and diversify across sectors. Mm -hmm. So that also, ha I think the journey has begun, uh, good progress has been made, uh, already 30% of the business is coming from non-traditional sectors, which is good. Going forward, I think the base is set, so you've got geographical diversification, you made your steps towards product diversification, 
and from now on it depends where the opportunities come and how they pursue but they're very well positioned to drive the top line growth okay and through this i think what we also like is the fact that the margins have been kept in mind and the capital structure of the company has been strong and when there has been a need they're not shied away from bringing in capital with some marquee strategic investors and that kind of gives additional strength to the company okay so what does it take to make it big in the world of business big again this is a very subjective big can be on variety of parameters big can be on scale that is one thing touching impacting maximum human beings i will consider that is really becoming big now that could be through your solutions your technology offering or your other work which you are doing i think these are the ways you can really become big okay mr choudhury mr nabar sandeep thank you for joining thank you well that was choudhury and nabar convincingly telling us how they were able to cross all the hurdles these are the mantras they implemented to build praj pursuing technology intensive value accretive businesses tapping new market new sector with existing technology motivating people through intrapreneurship models focusing on people cash and innovation clearly it seems like a technocrats mantras before i go here's an observation on praj made by dr r a mashalkar way back in 2006 and it is valid even today i quote him the value of praj cannot be simply measured in terms of its stock value it has to be measured in terms of its inspirational value for millions of young technopreneurs who have bought to emerge in this resurgent india of the 21st century unquote on that thinking note it is time to say goodbye see you next week with another interesting episode till then keep watching cnb